Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Let's Get Vulnerable podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. It's your host, Dr. Morgan. Just so you know, this episode is also available on YouTube. So we do have a YouTube channel. It's called Dr. Morgan TV. And if you want to come hang out with me live, by all means, do it. I would love to have you check out the YouTube channel. So you can see the video while you're listening to the episode. It's kind of cool. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's this thing called YouTube. Anyways, okay. (laughs) I want to just real quick before we jump into this episode where we will be talking all about desire and creating desire in securely attached relationships. Because so often I hear people talk about losing the intimacy, losing the hot connection, the uh, amazing sex. People will say, well, I don't feel like I can have a healthy relationship and have great sex. They oftentimes feel like they miss the sexual connection they had in the past with relationships that were not as emotionally healthy. So we're going to explore what does it look like like and how how do we begin to create a very hot physical connection while having an emotionally safe securely attached partnership such a great topic can't wait to explore it with you before we dive in let's just talk about that super bowl halftime show y'all how many of you were seeing that and you're thinking oh my gosh this was taking me back to middle school, high school. I know I was. I am what you call an elder millennial. I'm, you know, 89 birthday. So for me, that music was amazing. It brought up so many memories. I'm I'm curious who you liked in that. Of course, what I thought was cool was having Kendrick Lamar there as well, essentially representing the next generation of hip hop. And those of you who know me well know that I do love rap music and hip hop. I also love country music, EDM, classical, all the things. I'm, I'm a bit of a music addict. I have it on most of the time if I'm not coaching, if I'm not Um, speaking with people, I usually have music on and actually wanted to be a DJ before (laughs) pursuing my career as a psychologist. So anyways, I don't know if you're like me and you really love music and it helps you with your mood and just, uh, enjoyment. But I thought that Super Bowl halftime show was one of the best in years. Loved it. Loved it. All right, let's hop into today's topic. So excited. It is once again, how to create desire and amazing intimacy. I'm trying to think of other ways to say hot sex because I don't, I don't know. I still worry if my, if my family's listening, you know, just anyways, we're just gonna, we're just gonna call it like it is how to create hot sex and a securely attached relationship. What does it mean? How do we do it? We're going to dive in. I wanted to let you know, there is a great book on this topic. I have it right here. If you're on YouTube, you're seeing it and it's called mating in captivity. This is by Esther Perel. One of my favorite podcasts, um, from her actually was where, where shall we begin? If you're interested in relationship dynamics and you want to hear live couples therapy, go check out where shall we begin? She's amazing. Um, but yeah, we're going to just talk about some of the pieces from this book, some of the pieces from my own experience of working with couples, my own personal experience. Here's what can happen when We are creating a secure attachment and we're building healthy love. There can be a lot of closeness that develops. 
And with routine, with closeness, with not enough attention to each person's individual, with not enough attention to your self identity, you can start to create kind of a merged identity. This can also look like codependency, but there can also just be kind of a healthy version of this where things are just overly predictable. You are starting to merge very, very close. And what happens is desire needs mystery. Desire needs mystery. It needs a bit of space. And this can really damage our ability to feel turned on by our partners, to feel um, to feel desire. We can start to just get into routines. Things become predictable. Um, and what happens is people will talk to me about, well, oh my gosh, the sex that I had with my emotionally unavailable, avoidantly attached partner, it was so good. A couple of reasons for that. Number one, there was a huge amount of distance between you. So the connection felt so incredible because you were craving that connection and you were not getting it in other places. So the connection was electric, right? Um, which is not necessarily healthy. <laughs> you hear me talk about, hey, sex is amazing when secure attachment is the foundation. So if we don't have that secure attachment in the relationship, and then we're trying to use sex to try to create a secure attachment that oftentimes leads to not feeling great when the relationship ends, to feeling betrayed, to feeling deeply wounded, more hurt, and um, to feel as though you gave so much and then it wasn't reciprocated, right? So really acknowledging that even though you may feel that passion and that desire with the emotionally unavailable person, it is not sustainable ultimately, right? To, to sustain a long-term healthy relationship, you do need to have that emotional closeness and there has to be that safety and the secure attachment. Okay. So now I've explained a little bit of kind of why um, this can happen and also why maybe in the past you felt uh, as though the physical intimacy was better with emotionally unavailable people. And now I just want to start to move into, well, what do we do? I want to read you a couple quotes. These are by Esther Perel. And these are where she's talking about desire. So listen up. Here's the first quote. Love enjoys knowing everything about you, whereas desire needs mystery. Love likes to shrink the distance that exists between me and you, while desire is energized by it. If intimacy grows through repetition and familiarity, eroticism is numbed by repetition. Here's the second quote, and then we'll discuss. With too much distance, there can be no connection, but too much merging eradicates the separateness of two distinct individuals. Then there is nothing more to transcend, no bridge to walk on, no one to visit on the other side, no other internal world to enter. Oh my gosh. I love these quotes. I wish that I had understood this earlier. I'm sure many of you listening are also saying, gosh, I wish I had understood this earlier because what happens is with anxious attachment, right? If we have an anxious attachment style or even an avoidant attachment style, you can see how those two ways of being are on the ends of the spectrum. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum and they both are not sustainable 
for long-term relationships. So how do we create intimacy and desire that feels good while maintaining a securely attached relationship? I'm going to give you a couple tips. Number one, you must continue to develop your individual identity. You must continue to be so curious about yourself that you continue to get to know who you are. And this is within the context of your relationship and outside of your relationship. You have to be so curious about who am I? What do I need? What do I feel most excited about? Where am I called to grow? This is so, so key. So this is about how do I connect with my own separate identity and how do I continue to give energy to my identity, to who I am, to what I need, right? So, so many of you with anxious attachment, you'll find yourselves in a relationship and then all of a sudden you stop giving to yourself. You stop getting curious about what your needs are about the ways that you want to grow. I'll give you an example. So I think you've heard me talk about this. My partner loves fishing. He's obsessed with fishing, fly fishing in particular. My past self would have done whatever I could to take up fly fishing, get the gear, buy the outfits, right? However, knowing myself so much better and understanding that in secure attachment, there are ways that we are different. There are experiences that are separate and there are things that are shared. With all of that knowledge, I was able to confidently decide fly fishing is not for me and that I really value my partner doing that for himself. That I love that he has something that he is so passionate about, that he gets excited about it. He does the gear. He reads up on it. He's tying his own flies, right? I feel attracted to him because he has something that he is so passionate about. And I love that he can go and do that on his own. And honestly, and this might be TMI for you, but I just want to further illustrate Honestly, it does turn me on when I see him in his fly fishing outfit and he's got his stuff ready to go. It's attractive to me. It's a world that I don't understand, but that I know that he's passionate about. And that's where Esther Perel, she's talking about that bridge, right? My desire has a bridge to cross. I'm not there with him in all of it, right? I don't understand that world. So that's one of my biggest biggest tips for you. Make sure you're clear about what is your partner's, what is yours. Maintain things that are just for you. Maintain things that are just for you. My partner has fly fishing. I have my gym time. I honestly don't really share my gym time with anyone. I have writing and I have podcasting here. I have all kinds of things that are just for me that my partner is not a part of. And that is wonderful. And we also have shared activities. The second point is do not be afraid to spend time apart. I know with the pandemic, there were so many of us who were spending every single day with our partner working from home. That is a desire killer. Make sure that you have time in your schedules. You can even go on. I love to go on solo trips or trips to visit my family. You need to be able to spend time apart. Uh, there's something to that saying that absence makes the heart grow fonder or distance makes the heart grow fonder. So really encourage each other to do things solo or to do things with other groups of people right? You have to be able to maintain that independent identity. So I gave you two tips there. There's more that I could say, uh, but this is a really good starting point. 
And I just want you to, to really think about this of how do I continue to develop myself while in a relationship? Another key thing is that when you are taking that time away or you are doing something that's just for you and your partner's not a part of it, we do want to offer our partner reassurance and say, hey, everything is great with us. I love you. I appreciate you. And this is something I'm doing for me. I need this time to myself to take care of me right? So both can be true. We cannot get into the codependency trap where it's, I'm so scared that you're going to leave me that we need to do everything together. We need to merge our identities and become enmeshed, become confluent as they would say in gestalt psychotherapy. We cannot become confluent where we become one person or become codependent. That's an easy trap to fall into when there's fear of abandonment but it kills desire. It kills intimacy and it does not create a healthy, secure attachment. Ultimately, both people build up resentment. Both people will feel trapped in the dynamic. So know this, that by you honoring your individual self, you are also taking care of the relationship. I hope you like this episode. If you are like, I have no idea how to do this. I've repeated the pattern over and over and over where I just become codependent. And then I end up resenting my partner. And I feel terrible when I go through a breakup. If that's you and that's every relationship, I want you to know there is another way. There are so many things that you can do to begin that internal healing work. If you need help with it, I do want to invite you to join us inside of the ESL program. That's the Empowered, Secure, Loved program. It's the eight-week relationship transformational program that I designed to take you from wherever you are right now and help you move into a secure attachment style. It's helped hundreds of women. I would love to have you explore and see if it's the right fit for you. There's no pressure Um, But if you want more information, the best thing you can do is schedule a breakthrough session. The link will be in the show notes. The link is also in my Instagram bio. But in this session, you will meet with one of our program advisors. They'll figure out exactly where you are right now, give you a diagnosis on your current relationship patterns, and then they'll build you a customized plan for moving forward. There's no obligation to join the program. But like I said, if you're interested, that would be the best thing to do. And I'm so glad that you're here, that you're doing this work, regardless of where you are in your journey. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I hope you found it helpful. And of course, you know, I am wishing you high self-worth and great relationships. I'll talk with you soon. 